Hi there, this is Vivi Cameron here, and today I'm going to be sharing nine ways and ideas to use color burst watercolor powders for card making and paper craft. And I'm going to invite you to stay until the very end of this video because although color boards has been in the market for about seven years and is a medium that many of you might know, today you might learn something new. Color burst watercolor powders are highly concentrated microfine colorants. You can sprinkle them on wet watercolor paper and wash them burst. The dispersion of these pigments is insane. They will reach any wet area, creating unexpected and beautiful textures and patterns. This is the most common way to use color burst. I have here the bright colors. They come in these little bottles with a fine tip applicator. Each bottle contains six grams of powder, a lifetime supply, considering that a little bit of this powder goes a long way. The bright color burst contains the primary colors and because these are fully blendable, I can mix and match different powder colors to create new shades. The sky is the limit. I'm going to keep it very basic today and I'm going to show you what I like to do with this kind of medium. So as you see there, I'm tapping and not squeezing the bottle to get the powder on the palette and then using a dropper I'm just adding a little bit of water to activate that pigment or to dilute that pigment. Then using the same dropper, I'm just dropping this on wet watercolor paper. And I'm going to do the color swatches in this way to show you the true colors of these pigments. However, it's very important to bear in mind that depending on the amount of powder and water that you put into the mix, the colors are going to be more vibrant and intense or lighter. I got very intense colors now because I applied a fair amount of the powder with very little water. So that's how I make swatches just to be able to show you the colors. You can find pictures of the swatches and all the projects I'm going to be sharing with you in this video in my blog together with more information. The link is in the video description. Now let me show you a couple of ideas that I found very useful. You can use a Nubo aqua brush or any aqua brush you might have in your stash, fill it with water, drop a little bit of the pigment inside this and as easy as that you will get a brush pen and you can use this to add color to stamped images or any other paper craft project you might have and you can apply this directly to the paper or you can also apply water first and then use it over the paper for a very smooth blending and transitions. Please don't worry if the bristles of your brushes get stiff because of the pigments. All you have to do is to dip this in water and your water-based paints are going to be as good as new. Of course, I'm using the worst brushes I have because I've been using these brushes with acrylic paints and to do all crazy experiments. So these are not nice, but they work. You can use anything you have in your stash. Okay, so those are the paints. Now I want to give you an idea to make sprays. So all you need to do here is to put water inside a spray bottle, put some of the powder inside the bottle, shake this up and this is ready to go. You can also make shimmer sprays by adding white pearlescent shimmer powder or something like that. So if I spray this over this, and this is something I want to show you, you will see how these colors are going to start blending stay away, creating a brownish color when that yellow pigment touches the purple pigment on the paper and it's going to create a green color when it touches the blue. And I'm using here a water brush that I filled with water and I apply a little bit of the yellow color burst just to blend this out. And I want you to pay attention to a specific detail. If you see here this happy face that I painted directly on the paper using the purple pen, I'm not going to be able to lift or to blend that ink with the layer of ink I'm applying over. And that's because I apply pure pigment over dry paper. So the paper absorbed that ink and it got stained. And I can still even see that the ink is purple. 
And right there, you can also see how different the pigment behave when you apply it on wet. So they blend straight away. So there you go, a very brief explanation of the markers and the spray. If you are going to do coloring with this, you need to work wet on wet to be able to do blending. That's it. Here, I want to show you really quick how to create other shades. I'm using purple, green, and yellow just to create those earthy tones that I'm going to be using for a project that I'm going to be showing you in this video. And I also wanted to show you how I made these magnificent tools that I'm going to be using all along this video. One of the main ideas I want to share with you is how to make ombre paper using these pigments. I'm going to use Artisa Expert watercolor paper that is 300 grams, very smooth, and it's 100% cotton. So it's very absorbent. And to work with this paper, I like to use a lot of water. And on the wet paper, I'm going to drop in the color burst diluted in water using a dropper, just like that. And I leave a white space between the different ink colors. Then using a water brush, I just spread the ink from the lighter shade to the darker to avoid contaminating. Another thing you can do to avoid contaminating the colors is to keep washing the brush or cleaning the brush and also the dropper or the tool you are using to apply the pigments on the paper. So here I'm using the three last shades. I almost didn't have room to apply the purple one here, but it's fine. This is just one of the hundred papers I made that day. I spent about three hours making paper. And this is important because you learned to mix and blend the pigments in different ways. And it's a fun and relaxing experiment. And you don't need to put a lot of effort to do this because as the paper is still wet, those pigments are going to keep spreading and blending and the seams between colors are going to be less noticeable. So I made tons of paper like this in different sizes and trying different things. Another way to do this is to apply the powder on dry paper and then spray water. But with this, you are going to get a more unpredictable blending. So this one has a lot more texture than this one here that was made using the pigments wet on wet. And then you can get crazy making paper. You can use two colors of the powders. You can sprinkle the powder over the wet paper. You can also make the base of your paper by transferring the pigments in a wet paper to another. And as I use a lot of green in my projects, I like to make different green colors and also adding texture to those colors so that when I die cut this or use this on my projects, those papers add extra beauty to the projects. I'm also using here photographic paper, so I'm just dabbing this onto that piece that has been painted with those pigments. And as easy as that, I transfer that ink to this piece as a nice glossy finish, and that will add a lot of value to die cutting compositions, for example, or stamped compositions. So this is watercolor paper here, and here I have another piece of photographic paper. So you can see that paper shining. And the way I apply that ink is just basically using whatever I got left on my glass mat. Nothing went to waste. And I spent so much time doing this that I even found a way to shade these powders to make trees. And when I was doing that, I said, no, oh, oh, stop it there. Red flags, I'm going to go in another direction. Just forget about it and keep doing what you were doing that is just crazy blending on the paper to create different paper colors. And the more pigment I apply on the paper, of course, the paper is more vibrant and the less pigment I use, of course, the paper looks lighter. So the sky's the limit. You can create any color using these pigments. I hope you got that message. And here you have some of the papers I got left. Sadly, I already die cut them. I already used them for different projects that I'm going to show you in this video. But don't worry, I'm not going to show you the card making process. I'm going to show you results and how I use this paper for die cutting, stamping, and how I do also stenciling and coloring with the pigments. So let's start for the very basics. And that for me is die cutting. And for that, all you have to do is to die cut this beautiful paper 
to be able to create endless decorative elements for your projects. And for the records, all the projects you are going to see in this video are in my blog, and you will find links to those projects in the main posts for the color burst watercolor powders. I'm also going to add a supply list with all the products I'm using in this video in the video description, except for this one here that is going to be released on April, but I could not resist and I have to show you more samples using this gorgeous cardstock and also how this looks when you apply hot foiling over. Just gorgeous, so this is something to look forward on my blog and my YouTube channel next month. So now let me show you another easy idea to add color to die cuts. And that's using the spray I showed you at the beginning of the video. A spray paints is one of the easiest and quickest way to add colors to any paper craft composition. So this is therefore something to consider when using the powders. You can use the sprays also with the stencils to achieve a very subtle and blurry image in a background, for example. But I have a better idea to achieve really crisp compositions. So to do that, we are going to use a blending brush. I mix it the powders with water and I'm using a tiny amount of that liquid on the brush. So basically the brush is almost dry so that the inky solution won't bleed underneath the stencil, allowing me to create a more well-defined stenciled image. If you are not happy with the color, all you have to do is to place the stencil again and repeat. And having watercolor brushes filled with the pigments is really handy when you are doing this because you can squeeze the pen and drop some of that liquid into the palette and it's easy to leave from the palette using the blending brush without making any mess. So there you go. This is an idea to do a stenciling using color burst watercolor powders. And if you prefer, you don't need to use a color palette. You can just apply the ink on your glass mat and then using a blending brush, apply this through the stencil like I'm doing here. And you will find that by applying this super simple technique using blending brushes, some of these stenciled images are going to look as sharp as if you were using inks. And I keep experimenting, trying to add darker areas on the image, and I have another idea for you. So I'm going to use this embossing paste by Spellbinders, and I'm going to mix it with this pigment that I have here on my color palette. So this is green color burst diluted in water. I'm just mixing it with that embossing paste and I'm going to apply this over this panel like so. And as I made very little of that paste, now I'm going to make a little bit more and I'm going to use the blue paint just to squeeze a little bit of that paint. I'm going to mix this and I'm going to apply it over the stencil. Once this was done, I decided to sprinkle a little bit of the powder through the stencil and spray a little bit of water. And I made a hot mess. And with a wipe, I tried to clean this up. I was experimenting and I'm actually loving this because you will be able to make coordinating backgrounds for die cut compositions or stamped compositions that you make using color burst. So I really like the idea of getting coordinating elements for my projects. And I also wanted to give you an extra idea using this custom paste. So once I stencil this image here, let's say that I finish, I'm going to allow this to dry. Then I'm going to try to add more ink over this. So if I apply this with this brush, I can still see that blue color of the paste that is absolutely gorgeous by the way and if I spray water you won't see any of that pigment moving around. What I'm going to do is to sprinkle a darker color of color burst and you will see how this is going to reveal 
that stencil it image a lot more so i really love this and this is just another idea to get creative using color post and stencils and i'm telling you this translucent paste just looks amazing of course this is just an experiment but have a look at this and look at that color so you can make this in any color by using different colors of color burst. Now, off camera, I keep putting water on this panel and I wash off the color, but it gives you a good idea of things that you can make with these watercolor powders, stencils, and paste. Now let me show you a very, very basic idea to add color to a stamped image. So I first heat emboss the image using gold embossing powder. And then using my DIY marker, I'm going to add a little bit of color over the petals. And then immediately I'm going to spray this with water, allowing those pigments to move between the embossing lines. Now I'm going to drop in some yellow and that's going to turn that blue paint into green. And the embossing is going to resist the water so it's going to make some puddles and those puddles when dry are going to look very nice and organic and sometimes that's all you need to do to create a car background and if you pass your hand over this there is no pigment coming off the page now i'm going to share with you my very favorite thing to do to colorize projects using the papers i made using the color burst and also applying the color directly to the images. So the first thing we are going to do is to do some paper piecing. And to do that, we are going to stamp the images over our DIY cardstock and we are going to fussy cut them. You can also take advantage on the textures of the cardstock to add interest to your stamped images as I'm doing with this little bird here. And then we are going to use a memento marker to add that black ink all over the edges of the images so that you won't be able to see those raw white edges. And then you can add more color to the stamped images. This could be shadows, accents, or little things that make those images to look a little bit nicer. So I'm blending here red and green powders to create a brown ink that will allow me to add shadows over this image and I'm just using that water brush to do that and I also like to use glaze paints to add a little bit of ink over the eyes of this kind of images so I get those glossy eyes in one go these are super cute and you can also add glossy accents over so I'm using here also yellow ink to add some colors to the cheek and the head of the beard keeping things very simple. I stamped this image over a piece of watercolor paper that I colored using yellow and purple color burst, and that created a super cool background and color for this cap. And I do pretty much exactly the same with all the images I want to colorize for my paper pieced composition. So to finish this, I'm going to stamp this on a solid piece of a smooth white cardstock and not using watercolor paper to stamp this image because this image is super intricate and if you stamp this on watercolor paper probably you will lose a lot of detail or you will struggle to stamp. Now I'm going to stamp other images and because I'm not using the misty I'm going to make a lot of pressure on the clear block and I'm using underneath an stencil mat by waffle flowers that's giving me some cushion for the stamping. Now I'm going to add all those images over this solid stamped image. And I'm going to add more color using very little water. This is a smooth cardstock and it's not designed to be used with watercolors, but you can do very light watercolor just to add a hint of color here and there. And if you want to apply more color, allow the first layer to dry and then apply a little bit more. It's very important to me to be able to add 
darker areas on the images so that i'm using that brown ink to add shadows here and there and i'm also splattering this just to add extra textures i'm also going to add some sparkle over this just to see if the pigment react well with that sparkle and there is no problem at all it actually looks really nice so this is actually as nice as using any other water-based marker or watercolor and the price point of these pigments is really good you can find them on amazon and i'm going to be adding those links also in the video description and when you go to amazon you can see that this is an american company and they deliver to the uk and there's no import fees deposit so that's very good so this is the card this is what we can make with those pigments and you can see all the little textures and all that interest that you can add to your projects by using such versatile coloring medium and using that custom cardstock that we have made with the color burst i also made these banners for these cards here i just stamped the letters over a piece of that cardstock and i just cut around in a very quirky and imperfect way and I just put this together. So those are extra ideas for you to use the paper and the powders. And there is one more idea, and I promise that's the last one, and I let you go. And it's to create a shimmery paints by mixing the color burst with any white mica powder you might have. I was experimenting until I got it right. And what I did was mixing, let's say 70% white mica powder and 30 percent of the color burst remember the color burst is highly pigmented so you don't need a lot of powder to change the color of other mediums i don't use black watercolor paper so i don't have any in my stash but i'm using here black smooth cardstock that is okay to show you some samples of the paints and how this looks and I think this looks amazing and it's so super easy to do so that's another idea to use color boards to change or alter the colors of other mediums the sky's the limit and that's all for today I hope you enjoyed this video do not forget to subscribe to my channel or to visit my blog for more ideas and inspiration the links to the blog post and also to the supplies is in the video description as well thank you very much for watching and happy crafting bye